Okay, today we are going to talk about the anatomy of a long bone. You may tell me what bone that is exactly. You know, it's a long bone, so it can you can narrow it down. Look at the entire structure. Think before you speak. Raise your hand if you think you know what bone this is. Sloan? No, I know it's a long bone. What bone is it? No, nope. I'm beginning that every day. A femur looks like this. I mean, this is the part that snaps in your hip. See, that's a femur. Does that look the same on the screen? Chris, it's a humerus bone. That is correct. Now, Chris, is it the left or right humerus? It's the right. It's the right humerus. You can tell by looking at the elbow, the uh, hinge joint. All right, so let's label these things, these parts. We have two ends. Scout, what do we call the ends of a long bone? We call these the epiphyses. Epiphyses is plural. Epiphysis is singular. E P I P H Y P H Y S I S. Okay. Now, if you were an orthopedist and you had to put a, a patient in a cast or you had to reset their bone, epiphysis is not good enough. You have to tell me which epiphysis is which. So what do we call the epiphysis that is closer to your body? The proximal epiphysis is correct. And what do you call the epiphysis that's further from your body? Distal. Very good. When I was seven years old, I fractured my left radial distal epiphysis. Let me write that down. Left radial distal epiphysis. Okay, I think you all know that left would be my left arm. That's check, we got that. What does radial mean? What bone is being referenced? The radius. So I broke, I broke my left radius, and where did I break it? The far end, the distal end. So the doctor knew, okay, left radial epiphysis. He didn't want to work on my elbow. He needed to work on my wrist to reset it. All right. What do you call the shaft of a bone, Chris? The diaphysis. Very good. So there's the, the general parts. There is a part called the mediaphysis, but we don't need to know that. Okay. Now, I want to take a closer look at the diaphysis. And I want you guys to see that there is bone marrow inside. That stuff looks like yellow lipstick. That is marrow. There are two types of marrow. There's yellow marrow and there's red marrow. Yellow marrow is fat. That's what you all just held in your hand with the sheep femur. Red marrow produces blood. Now, if you've ever heard of the disease called leukemia, it is cancer of your blood. Now, your blood comes from bone marrow. So if somebody has cancer in the blood and they need, to, they need to hopefully recover from that and heal from that, the first thing you have to do is you have to find the source of that cancerous blood or those cancer cells in the blood. It comes from marrow. So people that have leukemia have to have a bone marrow transplant. Their bone marrow is mutated. It's bad. It's carcinogenic. It's producing cancerous cells. You got to get it out of there. And then replace it with the donor marrow that is healthy and normal and makes non-cancerous cells. So if you ever heard of someone have, needing a bone marrow transplant, this is why. Because their marrow is making cancer cells. You got to get rid of it or it's going to just keep doing that. Replace it with a donor, a donor marrow that is nice and healthy and non-cancerous. The cavity in which this marrow is found is called, hold on a sec, the uh, medullary cavity. 
if you were to actually use your finger and scoop out all that marrow that you just pushed down on, uh, you would find that the inside of the bone is hollow. There's that cavity in there. Cavity just means an open area. Okay, next. The coating tissue of bone is called the periosteum. This week is Halloween week, and I'm sure you've driven around town and you've seen people with Halloween decorations outside their homes. When I look at all of you, I see your epidermis. That is the outermost layer of your skin. Well, the outermost layer of bone that you see on these decorations that makes the bone look white is called the periosteum. You can actually peel that off. You can peel that off. So there's like bright white, and then you peel that off. It looks more like a, a dullish, maybe faded yellow type white. That's going to be bone without the periosteum. This image here is a lot better look. That, that uh, tissue being peeled back is the periosteum. You can, it's, it's vascular, it has blood flow, you can be removed. Now the periosteum is the outermost layer. We hear that again when we do the cardiovascular system. The outer layer of your heart is called the pericardium. You have an inflammation of that, it's called pericarditis. So peri means like the outermost layer. Well, if the pericard or the periosteum is the outermost layer, take a look at this. See this black line I'm drawing? This is the lining, oops. Uh, this is the lining of your medullary cavity. That lining is called the endosteum. I know you've heard this before. What does the prefix endo mean? It means in, inside. It's where we get our word enter from. So the periosteum is the outside of the bone. The endosteum is the inside that lines the medullary cavity. Any questions so far? Okay. Take a look at this. Look at this line right here. That is the epiphyseal line or the epiphyseal plate. Same thing. When you were a kid and you went to the pedi uh, pediatrician, they may have said that your growth plates are open. And then later, when you're about your age now, your growth plates are closed. When your growth plates close, which is what this is, the epiphyseal line, you're done getting taller. Your growing is complete. Because when you're younger, that's cartilage. And cartilage has um, the ability to grow more. But once it's bone, you're done stretching, no more. Now, I'm gonna ask you all a question that my second period anatomy was stumped on. My fifth period anatomy was stumped on. You're next, see if one of you might be able to figure it out. Why would the epiphyseal line be surrounded by all of this spongy tissue? Grace? And what does blood flow permit? You are the first person to nail it, so good job. If you didn't hear her, she said the reason why spongy bone is all around that epiphyseal line is because the spongy bone allows for a lot more blood vessels. Blood vessels carry blood. Blood equals growth. You do all your growing on your plates, your lines, um, and you need blood to make that happen. That's why there's spongy bones surrounding that epiphyseal line. And that, that gets me to the next tissue. This is spongy tissue. We can just call it spongy bone. There's a blown up image of spongy bone just to the right. As you can see, it has a lot of cavities and pathways and holes, looks like kind of Swiss cheese or a honeycomb um, or a sponge, that's how it gets its name. It allows for a lot more blood vessels to navigate throughout it and really nourish it with um, oxygen and nutrients. Right here, look at this. I don't think I can zoom in anymore. What type of bone is that right there? If you were the butcher yesterday, when I was asking him to cut that bone in half, if you're starting from one end of the bone, one of the epiphyses, the first tissue you come in contact in the bone is this tissue. This is compact bone. Compact bone does have blood flow, guys. It does, D-O-E-S, does have blood flow. It just doesn't have as great of blood flow as spongy bone does. How many of you have broken a bone before? How long did it take to heal? Couple months, couple weeks. For me, two months, I had to wear a cast. 
a couple months for a broken bone is nothing. Uh, people have had torn ligaments and tendons and muscles and cartilage that have been more than a year. A couple months, easy. That's because your bone has a lot of blood flow. It is highly vascular. And then at the very top and bottom of the bone, we have articular cartilage. And can you all be more specific than articular cartilage? What type of cartilage is it? It's hyaline cartilage. That's right. Fibrocartilage cartilage looks like a, a squashed marshmallow. You only have it in your hips, um, your back, and your knees. All right, so there are all the parts of a long bone. Perhaps on your test, I'll have a bone that is unlabeled. It just says A, B, C, D, and you have to match up the different parts with the names. So be sure you study that. Let's get to part B. Is everybody ready? This one's pretty easy. Eva, what type of tissue is this? That spongy bone. Isabella, what type of tissue is that? That's compact. You can see there's a lot less space. That's how it gets its name. And then what is this? Allows the bone to move with other bones? Articular cartilage, specifically hyaline cartilage. If you take a look at this diagram, guys, this little chunk right here was taken out of the epiphysis. I'll pause a moment. I see a lot of pens moving. I'll let you guys catch up. Notice in the compact bone, does it have blood flow? Yeah. Does the spongy bone have uh, blood flow? Yeah. They both do. Spongy bone just has better blood flow. Okay. I'm going to point to one. I want to see if you guys, for this last image, I want to see if you can uh, tell me what's what. Alyssa, you ready to move on? Are you good? You're good? All right, here we go. What, what, uh, what's that? Compact, good. What is this area here? No, the, the area, the, the, op, the space. Medullary cavity. What is the lining of the medullary cavity? All right, how do you pronounce it? Endosteum. You, you want to say endosteum, I get it, but it's endosteum. What is the outer, light, uh, outer coating of bone? Periosteum. What is this yellow stuff? What kind of marrow specifically? Yellow marrow, I mean, obviously. Uh, then you can definitely see that it does have blood flow. So that's pretty much a giveaway. And that's about it, guys. Know those parts of a long bone, okay? Those will be on your test.